This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Tough tests lie ahead for some of the nation's best college football teams this weekend. We've got Texas taking on Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry. We've also got Kentucky taking on Georgia, Notre Dame against Louisville. Some very fun games on tap for this weekend across college football with undefeateds scoring off. We're going to break down those games, outline where Ed's value or Ed's model sees value for this week and get you ready for what should be another fun week in college football. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. Fun week of college football this past week. Another one coming up on Saturday. How you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm really excited to see if Michigan's game last week was a fluke, which I missed, or, or whether that was really the, the real Michigan. Uh, they have kind of a similar road game to, uh, to a non-division opponent, although I think we get rid of that soon. And um, yeah, we'll see. And then, and then Texas-Oklahoma should be fantastic. I'm looking forward to that as well. It's always a fun game, but I think when the stakes are as high as they are, it's a thrill. Now, the Michigan game you're referencing last week, you had the over in that game, over hit in like, I think, middle of the third quarter. Um, so that was well, pretty without, nice. Without, without much help from Nebraska, too. So Correct. Was- Correct. This week, though, Michigan on the road taking on Minnesota. Minnesota... They're a very hard team for me to figure because that yeah. first half against Northwestern, they played well. They played better the second half against Louisville, but kind of an uneven spot there. So Michigan, 19 and a half point favorites in that game. I feel like Michigan just kind of keeps on passing tests. At least that's my my thought on it so far. What have you seen from them thus far? Well, I mean, I thought they were kind of bad the first couple of games. So yeah. um, they, did, they did not... Uh kind of live up to expectations like they did in those early uh, warm-up games last year where they, you know, they just destroyed people. So there can be a lot of reasons for that. Um, sometimes you're just not playing that well, like a Georgia team, which we'll talk about soon too. So uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I still think they have a lot of, que- I, I definitely still have a lot of question marks about Michigan and honestly, like every single team. Yeah. And that could play into the futures market. We'll talk about Georgia specifically with that Kentucky game, but also more broadly with the national championship, deciding whether the door is open right now for someone else to step in there, check out, uh, see if there's any value in the national championship futures and much more all here in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread, wherever you get your podcast coming up later on today, Tom Vecchio will preview Thursday night's game between the bears and the commanders. Not a, the most exciting game, but hey, if you got some bets down for it, it could be. I'll be previewing that for primetime, Tom, for Thursday Night Football here on the podcast feed and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. And beginning this week, Tom will be with us twice per week uh, for Thursday Night Football and for Sunday Night Football. That will be up on Saturday morning. To get all those shows as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we also have our regular shows up on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. 
or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Ed, you talked last week here on the show about how Georgia had not lit it up so far this year, and then they went out there and had to scramble to beat Auburn on the road. They're still the favorites to win the national championship at 3-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook, so we've seen some shakiness from Georgia does that lead to value elsewhere in this market for you, Ed, based on the current odds of the national championship? I think potentially. I mean, I haven't bet anything, but what's interesting about my best set of numbers that I, I keep from members of the site is that the top five teams are within a point of each other. It's the four teams that you would expect from the preseason. So Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, and then Texas has got into that conversation as well and you know i think i think it's pretty interesting at this point um alabama still up there despite their quarterback issues i don't see them on the top six of the sbf uh, fbs championship odds so maybe that is uh whoa 25 25 to one they were 50 two weeks ago (laughs) yeah so at least they picked a quarterback so maybe that you know goes from uh 50 to 1 to to 25 to 1 i mean my, my numbers would say that you know Alabama is uh, maybe a value there, mm-hmm. but it it's, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there really are top teams. You know, I talked about those five teams that are within a point of each other. And then, and then you have like the PAC 12 schools that are also in the top 10 that actually have the good quarterbacks, you know, the Washington's and, and USC's and in my opinion, to a less, lesser extent, Oregon. Um, one of those, you know, I mean, Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, one of those guys probably going to be the top pick in the next, next draft. Traditionally, a team that wins the national title has a guy that is the top pick in the next draft. Um, not always, but uh, so, I don't know. I mean, I still don't trust USC's defense. So, a lot of question marks. I think it's wide open, which is kind of fun. It's uh, not anywhere near, you know, those, what, five years in a row that it was Alabama or Clemson yeah. kind of kind of years, right? So it's kind of fun, and uh, yeah, let's hope it continues to be fun. Yeah, with the USC thing, I think that last week against uh, Colorado was super emblematic of their their season, where the offense shreds. Caleb Williams is throwing six touchdowns, stuff like that, Because, but then because the defense is brutal, they let Colorado back in the game and actually almost make that very competitive. So... Can they walk that tight that that tightrope the entire year? Maybe because Caleb Williams is very good and can erase a lot of sins on the defensive side. But that's a that's a lot of games string together with a defense that's shaky, where you need the offense to be perfect every single week, and that's a pretty tough ask. So I think Alabama twenty five to one at is interesting at least, given that if there's a lack of separation, that could mean that we see Georgia falter at some point. Um, I know the SEC is not as stellar this year as it has been in the years past. So a decrease in Georgia may not mean, may not lead to a loss at any point, but I still do feel like there's more ambiguity, more uncertainty here, which means that taking a swipe at a longer shot is not as out of bounds as it mother otherwise may be. Yeah. I think I can talk myself into Alabama here. Just kind of looking at these odds. Um, they, they are up there in the numbers and, it is a wide open year, so so why not a team like Alabama? Why not? All right, let's uh, talk about some games here for week number six, beginning with that very fun game between Oklahoma and Texas, where right now Texas is a six and a half point favorite on a neutral site. Total is 60 and a half for this game, Ed, and it's been a fun year so far. Both these teams are undefeated. How do you see this game playing out Texas against Oklahoma? Yeah, uh, you know, my numbers have Texas by two and a half. Honestly, I think my my numbers should be like a little bit too high on Texas simply because they played Kansas last week without Jalen Daniels. That game got out of hand. Um, I don't know if I missed them on the the injury report or whether the the back thing just kind of came up out of nowhere, but he didn't play. And, you know, he's a Heisman level 
quarterback, right? So that that's definitely going to make a difference in this game. So my number should be overestimating Texas, but they only have them by two and a half here. Um, I also wonder, you know, how much this is being influenced by the fact that Texas won 49 to nothing last year in the same game. Um, so, but I, I also have this feeling that Texas might be really good and a legitimate national title contender as well. Um, you know, Oklahoma is a team that I think kind of came, I don't know if they were underrated in the markets, but it was a team that, you know, didn't have a winning record last year, but was zero oh and five in one score games. Uh, when you looked under the cover, they were a lot better. Um, they are up more from the preseason this season than, than even Texas. Uh, so it's kind of balanced by, uh, you know, this, this idea that Texas might really be good. And then also, um, you know, looking back at what Bill Connolly was saying in the preseason that Oklahoma might need another year to get where they want to go. Uh, it's kind of stay away from me. I mean, the numbers definitely like Oklahoma. I can definitely see it going that way, but I'm not betting it. What's the key hold up for you in taking the value, even though you're showing a good amount of value there? Is it more the Texas side where you think they may legitimately be very good, or is it more so not being convinced in Oklahoma, given the fact that they've had a lot of changeover and Brent Venable is still trying to get everything fully integrated there? Is it the Texas side or the Oklahoma side that causes the hold up for you? I think a little bit of both. I mean, when you yeah. look at who Oklahoma plays, it's not exactly, uh, you know, they haven't really beaten anyone that you you would say, hey, that's a really good win, right? So, yeah. I mean, this is – there's definitely stepping up in competition. I'm not sure that really matters because if you're obliterating bad yeah. teams, like that's usually a good sign, although that's certainly not what I said about Duke last week, <laughs> right? So, um, it, you know, it is a good sign that you you are obliterating bad competition. Um so I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I just feel I I don't know exactly how good Oklahoma is, and I think Texas could be really good. Okay, so even though Ed shows value here on Oklahoma, it is a stay away for him with Oklahoma plus six and a half. Let's talk about the other big battle between undefeateds in week number six in college football. That is Kentucky going to Georgia to take on the Bulldogs. Georgia right now, 14 and a half point favorite total for this game is 47 and a half. Now we talked about Georgia standing relative to the other heavyweights earlier on, but facing Kentucky is not the same as talking about national championship markets, even though they are, they are undefeated. So can Kentucky cover a two touchdown spread in this specific game? No. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think Kentucky is very good. I think this is a great buy low spot on Georgia. Um, you know, you already talked about how they struggled last week against Auburn. They needed a late touchdown uh, to win that game. But, it, you know, it's kind of nice when you have a guy in Brock Bowers who's yeah. probably the best player in the country, which you don't often say about a tight end. But he's been a beast ever since he, he stepped foot on campus there. Uh, there's a lot of kind of really ugly things in that game too. Uh, they gave up, uh, almost six yards per carry to an Auburn team that is rebuilding. Uh, and obviously explosive plays can play a role there, but you know, Auburn also had a 45% success rate on the ground. Um, that's higher than the, the college football average of about 42 and a half. That, that is certainly concerning and, and no one's going to say that Georgia is playing up to, uh, Georgia standards, right? Uh, I do think the kind of like the underlying fundamentals are a little bit better on them. Um, when I look at adjusted success rate, they're 13th on offense, 17th on defense. It's not Georgia standards, but it's it's also not awful either. And I just feel like, you know, they can they can turn it on at any point and start playing like Georgia. And I also really like, you know, it doesn't look like they have any real injuries. Uh, they're, you know, probably their second uh, most targeted person when he's healthy, Lad McConkey came back for his first game against Auburn. So having him getting fully back into the flow of this is, is also encouraging. And then Kentucky, Kentucky's just not a very good football team. I mean, I talked about the, actually I didn't talk about them on the show last week. Um, I, uh, I like Florida a lot last week against Tucky, Kentucky and Kentucky made me look bad because they won that game going away. But you know, a lot of that was explosive plays. Uh, Ray Davis had 280 rushing yards, 75 yard touchdown run. And um, and not a lot of else. You know, they have Devin Leary at the quarterback position, the transfer over for NC State. Uh, this guy's been terrible at throwing the ball for over two seasons now. Um, I, I don't think Kentucky can break big plays against Georgia's defense, partially because big plays 
have a huge random element, partially because Georgia's defense is elite. Uh, I don't think Kentucky's very good. Preseason, I would have made this more than three touchdowns. Uh, right now, I have it at about uh, 16 and a half, 17. I think there's a lot of value here. I would, you know, I mean, you could have gotten 14 earlier in the week. I still take 14 and a half. I think, I think Georgia, I think Georgia can run away with this. So as I had mentioned, uh, Georgia minus 14 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The minus 14 and a half is minus 105 at FanDuel for this one. I think the the encouraging thing, Ed, if we're talking about the flip side of Georgia, we talked about being skeptical of them for the national championship, but it kind of goes back to what you said with the Auburn game, where when they needed to push, they had a guy they could lean on that entire time, and right. he's a legitimate needle mover. So the counterpoint would be when Georgia's in tough games, they may be okay because – when they put the pedal to the metal, they can still be really, really scary. So obviously that, that may not matter for Kentucky because they may not need to like go fully in to leaning on Brock Bowers. But like, I think that that from a broader perspective was somewhat encouraging. I know it's like a bad game overall, but it's encouraging right. to me to see that when they had to turn it on, they still could. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is like, if you want them to cover this, like ideally you want them to turn it on when right game kicks off right and right. and that's what you really i mean that's what i think we'll see from georgia right like they're like uh we haven't really been playing up to our level let's 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 go ahead and do this and and let's start putting away teams in the first half like we're, we're used to doing in these types of uh games against uh teams with not really the same level of talent yeah, exactly. Okay, so that is on Georgia, minus 14 and a half, which is minus 105 right now at FanDuel taking on Kentucky. Final game we are going to discuss for today is Notre Dame at Louisville. Right now, Notre Dame is a six and a half point favorite. Total in this game is 54 and a half. That is up a point from where it was yesterday. Notre Dame has been very good financially to you, Ed, so far this year. Got the uh, the cover last week, luckily, <laughs> against Duke. Luckily. Got the cover against uh, in the opener as well over in Ireland. Can they do it again, Ed? Or does Louisville keep this one close? Yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I have this uh, Notre Dame by five, so not really showing any value, honestly, on, on either side. Um, you know, Notre Dame has been pretty good on both sides of the ball. Definitely a team I believe in. Uh, they're missing their kicker, so that's certainly not a, a good thing. And then, you know, Louisville is uh, is uh, in their first year under Jeff Brom. They've been pretty good. You know, he's brought in a ton of transfers. Um, you know, they. I think I think they're an okay team. You know, they were 39th preseason. They've they've moved up since then in my numbers. Uh, but I don't know. I think the market is basically pretty good on this one. Uh, I w I wouldn't bet it either way. I believe in Notre Dame, but that looks like just a little bit too high of a number. Were you watching able to watch the end of the Duke game last week? I, was. I did. I did catch that because it looks like it looked like the cover was definitely not going to happen just because yeah. of the, the game state, right? Kick a field goal towards the end of that game. But uh, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. I, I heard Marcus Freeman talking after the game, like, yeah, if his team, you know, we would have encouraged him to go down if we could have. And I was like, thank God you didn't because <laughs> like, I, and like, I get it because I think the counterpoint to saying, okay, you should have gone down to kick the field goal. The counterpoint is like, you really want to trust the kicking game in its current state to, to win you that game. Or do right. you want the guaranteed points? So yeah. I think that even though, like, even though it seems a bit fluky that they scored that touchdown, I do think that, like, all things considered, that probably was the right move to, to score the touchdown in that scenario. Right. And I think there's probably a difference, you know, in college right. versus the pros, right? I mean, right. we all, we all, a much different scenario, but, you know, Patrick Mahomes taking the slide yeah. towards the end of the game versus the Jets, uh, which, you know, cost some winners to become losers cost some losers become winners um but uh yeah so i i think uh i don't know i'm glad he went in so yeah I'll take the win i had over 41 and a half for that uh jets uh that jets chiefs game so i was chilling uh i, I thought it was a great game personally got to I, they made it closer than it should have been because it was pretty it got over 43 real fast but like, or over right. 40 real fast but still uh i was okay with the way things transpired at the end of that one 
That is all that we have here for today and for this week on the college football side of things. But fear not, Ed is back with us once again tomorrow to break down week number five in the NFL, which should be a fun one once again. Ed, if people are looking for the numbers you referenced on the college football side of things, where can they get to those? Yeah, I mean, you can always uh, get a sample of my stuff in my free email newsletter. Check that out at thepowerrank.com. Um, the numbers I talk about on the show are safe for paying members of the site. You can check out more about that at thepowerrank.net. Uh, NFL predictions, college football predictions, and uh, I've been doing uh, some NFL interception props this year as well. So check that out at thepowerrank.net. All righty. That's the powerrank.net for those, the powerrank.com for the general site, the football analytics show for Ed's football podcast, and on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. We are once again back with you tomorrow talking week number five in the NFL. Don't forget to check out Primetime Tom for Thursday Night Football as well, right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.